everyone, and welcome to another edition of Film Busters. I am, of course, your tubs of grubs, Waddy McFly. Today I will bring you the news. First up, the most exciting thing I saw. The Walking Dead Season 4 Comic-Con poster was revealed. Here it is. Glad to see some awesome characters are kicking some serious zombie. Also, once again, Dan Aykroyd has come out saying he's starting to write Ghostbusters 3. But don't get your hopes up, people. I mean, he's done this a million times. As much as I'm exciting about this, this isn't the first time he's teased us about it. It went from being an animated movie to stopping because Bill Murray said he wasn't going to do it, even though he said he was going to do it because the writers from The Office were going to do it, even though the writers from The Office are doing it, according to IMDb. Anyway, let me know what you think will happen and if you think it's a good idea, even if he makes a Ghostbusters trip. What's up, guys? Uh, I'm here doing the film review, um, viewers film review or whatnot. That film was The Brave Little Toaster. Um, and a film that I haven't seen for a very long time, and I'm really glad that I watched it again because it was pointed out to me that there was a scene that I don't think 80% of you out there who watched it as children remember. Much like I didn't, because it terrified me. There's a part in The Brave Little Toaster where he has his dream sequence because the toaster can sleep. Yeah. Uh, along with all the other appliances that move and talk and stuff, just not when we're looking. Anyways. <laughs> oh, I guess I should do this. If you don't know what the Brave Little Toaster is about, uh, first off, you're probably really young, or secondly, if you're my age, then you're dumb. Like, why haven't you watched it, stupid? Ouch. Your kids didn't. Shut up, Tim. You're dumb. <laughs> um, anyway, the Brave Little Toaster, it's about a uh, brave little toaster who um, this kid leaves on uh, their summer house or whatnot. They lived there, I can't remember. They lived there, his family left, and the kid was abnormally in love with the toaster for some reason. He didn't play with action figures, but he loved that toaster. So he leaves, he doesn't ever come back, and he grows up and they're like, our life really sucks here, so let's go on an adventure. Appliances moving across America to find this little boy. The toaster has a dream. <laughs> and this dream is of the little kid putting toast in him, pushing the button down, and um, waiting for the toast to be done. He's making faces in the toaster and it's all cute and everything and you're like, oh, this is adorable. He's dreaming about, he must really love that kid. And then all of a sudden it starts to smoke out of the top of the toaster and you're like, uh-oh, stuff's going down. And over the counter pops this huge clown that's got ugly green teeth and he's in a fireman, I mean, fireman get up and all he says, he looks right at the camera and he says, run, in a really creepy voice. Anyway, um, now, after you've heard me ramble about the brave little toaster, on to Arthur. In our hipster corner. Welcome to today's hipster corner. Is what I would be saying if you were welcome in hipster corner. You know, it was a lot cooler before you guys started showing up here. But in all seriousness, Thank You For Smoking is a terrific movie. Really brilliant satirical comedy starring Aaron Eckert, who plays a spokesman for a tobacco company. This is really hot. Now, <laughs> this may or may not be for children. Probably don't let your children watch it. Smoking is bad. They probably don't know the, that yet. But you should tell them that because it's bad. Anyway, brilliant. Very cleverly written um, and just, oh goodness. it. It shows you how to win an argument, not by being right, but by proving that other people are wrong. Nick Naylor's job is to defend tobacco, which he has to somehow justify to himself morally and somehow to his son as well. It's got a lot of interesting ideas in it that I really loved, and uh, it's just really cleverly done. And, um, and I think what I like about it is it kind of says, hey, Parents should be responsible for teaching their kids right and wrong. Not the government, not schools, not cigarette cartons. I guess you guys should like comment and stuff and suggest movies for us to watch and review. And yeah, we will see you next time.